There's definitely a stigma behind bloodworm and joker fishing that perceive it as being complicated and quite difficult to do. And I can promise you that is not the case at all. And this time of year in the winter months, there's no better bait for going out and getting bites on. So today I wanted to do a little bit of a basics bite size to show you how simple it actually is to use these baits, but also how to get the best from them, not only on the bank while you're fishing, but off the bank too. So we'll have a look at storing them, keeping them, and a few different ways of using it. If you've never used or fished with bloodworm and joker before, you're probably asking, what the hell are these things? And to put it simply, they're both basically really little red worms and they live naturally in the bottom of most of the lakes throughout the UK and Europe. And that's why they're so effective as baits because they're naturally found in these places and they form a staple diet for so many different coarse fish. They just absolutely love them, but they do come in several different varieties of joker in particular. But as a general rule, joker is what you use to feed in a ground bait, or I'll show you several different ways of introducing it in this video. And bloodworm, which is a little bit bigger than joker, is what you use on the hook. And in terms of what sort of joker you get, you typically get two different kinds. And the most popular is this stuff I've got here, which is a Russian joker. And as you can see, it's sort of blob together in some damp newspaper and that's how you'll get it from a supplier you can get it online and a lot of local tackle shops if you ask them can source it for you but the beauty and assets of russian joker is this stuff's quite easy to keep and use it'll keep just in the paper as it is here for a week or even two weeks after you've got it as long as you just keep spraying the paper with an atomizer keep it pretty damp it'll last ages and that's why I like using this Russian stuff. It's very simple and it's difficult to do anything wrong or kill it. So Russian joker, stick to that one. The other kind of joker that I like to use is actually dead joker and that's what I've got in this pack just here. Now this stuff's, I've actually had this in the freezer since about January last year and as you can see I've leamed that up so it's actually in lean. That's the best way to store and freeze and keep dead joker but dead joker for me comes into play when you're fishing for bigger fish because it lies dormant on the bottom and it's got a little bit of a stronger smell to it once it's been frozen you get it out of the freezer the night before defrost it it just sort of it's got a bit of a i don't know stronger smell to it that i'm sure attracts bigger fish like bream and even fish like f1s absolutely love the stuff so Dead joker for me, really important for bigger fish. And also when you're a tight northerner like me, if you've got a little bit of leftover Russian that you want to keep, you can lean it up, whack it in your freezer, and you've still got some really effective bait to fish with. Now onto the hook bait themselves. Like I said before, it is bloodworm and it's a little bit bigger than the joker. It's basically the same stuff. Both bloodworm and joker are larvae of a midge that live in the bottom of the lake but bloodworm's a little bit bigger so it must be a different kind of midge might be a really big one and it's a lot easier to put on the hook and i'll show you exactly how to do that when they're at, when we're actually on the box and when you get bloodworm from a tackle shop it'll come to you in a little um paper newspaper wrapping you'll get a small amount for the hook and a top tip for you as soon as you get that from the shop or delivered to your house from online get it in a little bit of water. I like these little airtight tubs. You can cover it in water and transport it to the bank in them. Keeps it a lot better than leaving it in that dry newspaper. If you're gonna have a go with Ludworm and Joker, then how much do you need for a session? And the answer is not a lot at all, really. Generally, when you buy it, you'll get half a kilo of Joker, which is two of these little packs. That, that there's a quarter of a kilo. So for about between 15 and 18 pounds, you'll get two packs of that, which is enough, in my opinion, for 
at least two sessions fishing. You'll probably have some left to freeze at that as well. And of course you get a nice pack of bloodworm for the hook as well. And not only can you keep the joker for quite a while, especially if you freeze it, but the bloodworm, it's a piece of cake to keep and it gets better the longer you keep it. And I'll show you how to do that in a little while. How do you keep your bloodworm when you're actually fishing with it then? Quite simple, really. Maggot tub, bait tub, doesn't really matter what it is, but a tub with about an inch, inch and a half of water in and the bloodworm in the bottom. And all you do is scoop a bit out when you want to put it on the hook, but don't have too much water in in winter because it makes your hands absolutely freezing. When you get your actual bloodworm for the hook from your tackle shop or your supplier, it'll come in a nice little... Um, past the parcel like this and it's just in newspaper and it's quite dry and the first thing I do whether I get it the night before a few days before or on the morning of a match I unwrap it out of the bit of newspaper that it's in and I get it straight in some water in that airtight tub so it won't spill anywhere you've got a lid that clicks onto it and just an inch or so of water in the bottom but put your bloodworm straight in to water and that way it'll just get it in as good a condition as it can be. Just, get, just be gentle with it because it is quite delicate, bloodworm. And that is back in its natural environment now. And keeping it in water like that just makes sure that it's lively, it's crispy. And it, it, honestly, the more time it spends in there, the better it'll get as a hook bait. And after your day's fishing... You can actually keep what bloodworm you've got left and it's a good idea to do that because it just gets better and better the longer that you keep it but you just need a few little tools and to know the method of doing it and that's what i'm going to show you now so these little tubs that are airtight and waterproof sort of thing really handy because after fishing stick them back in this tub click your lid on top and that way you can transport it home without it spilling in your van or car or anything then when you get home all you need to look after bloodworm effectively is a little pinky riddle and a bowl set that fits in each other and that way you can put the bloodworm through the riddle take off any dead ones and keep it nice and fresh and lively now you don't need to do this every day in fact i'm quite lazy and if i get chance to do it midweek i'll put it through a riddle on a wednesday but nine times out of ten, I find myself doing it Saturday morning before I go fishing and I just leave it in the same water all week. And to, to put it through a riddle, you want a little um, goldfish net sort of thing and just pour your bloodworm out of your tub after fishing into your net and then have about an inch of water on top of the mesh of the riddle like so and then just gently place the bloodworm on top and the, the live ones will crawl through and you'll just be left with a few skins, bit of dead, and sometimes after you've been fishing, you have an odd maggot or caster mixed in there as well, and you can just take all them off, and you're left with fresh bloodworm in the bottom of the bowl. That'll take a few minutes to go through anyway, but once that has gone through, all you need to do to keep it is drain off the remaining water that's in this bowl, so you're left with about an inch or so in the bottom, and just like the Joker, the best place to keep it is on a nice cold garage floor. And that bloodworm will last, just like the Joker, a week, two weeks, as long as you want it to, if you look after it. A big part of actually using bloodworm is getting the stuff on the hook. And a lot of people struggle, but there's a few tips and tricks I've got for you to make it as easy and as efficient as possible. The first one is to make sure You've not got any dead and rubbish bloodworm in your mix. And I do that by looking after it like I've told you at home. But also, when I get to the bank, I have a little riddle with me that fits in the top of a maggot tub. And I just pass it through for a final time. So I'm left with really good quality, neat, live bloodworm. The very best stuff. So each one I pick out is good enough for the hook. Now, when it comes to actually hooking one, to make it easy, rather than trying to pick out just one bloodworm at a time, get a few on a couple of your fingers. I'm left-handed with this sort of thing, so I go in with my left hand and pick out a big blobule 
of bloodworm and then I just shuffle them about on my finger until I find a good one. I can see a big long lively one there and I then just nip him really lightly not to pop him between my thumb and the finger where he is and I just pierce him through the dark green head at the top and the reason for that is that's the toughest bit of the blood worm at one end you've got two little pincers don't worry they don't bite and at the other end you've got the dark green tough head which just stops it coming off and it tends to keep the blood worm as lively as possible I'm going to put a couple on here both hooked through that black head look at them and you know when you've done it right because the blood worm is still alive on your hook and they're not sort of pierced popped they're still whole juicy blood worm if you pop one or you end up with a bit of a skin on it start again pull it off and put a fresh one on the better they look to you the better they look to the fish as well A lot of people associate bloodworm and this style of fishing with little tiny hooks and putting a little bloodworm on a tiny hook for a small fish, but that's not the case at all. And I have a few different hook baits in my armory for different things. A single bloodworm can be great when you're catching small fish like roach and perch, but generally I always opt for a couple on the hook. I feel like gives you a chance of a better fish, but for species like bream and skimmers, don't be scared of putting a big bunch of bloodworm on quite a big hook a 14 or a 16 with between 5 and 10 bloodworm on can be a great hook bait and by the same token don't be afraid of putting bloodworm on with other baits a maggot or a dead maggot with two or three bloodworm a fluoro pinky with a couple of bloodworm makes a lovely little cocktail bait that skimmers and bream in particular like love There are quite a few different ways of introducing joker into your swim when you're using it and certain ways suit particular conditions or species of fish or certain venues so while we're here i thought i'd run you through a little bit of them all just so you can get an idea of what might best suit your local place or what you want to do with your bloodworm and joker and the first way is what i consider the most simple because it basically involves feeding a little bit of joker in your ground bait that you'd normally use so this mix here is literally my favorite fish meal ground bait for um, silverfish on commercials in winter and I've put my usual feed in there which is a little handful of dead pinkies and maggots and a little handful of casters so they've gone in there and then I've literally just got a handful of joker fired it in there as well mixed it in so this mix is pretty much exactly what I'd normally feed but it happens to have a little bit of the magic joker in there as well. And as I've explained, fish this time of year, they can't resist the stuff. And putting it in your normal ground bait just gives it more pulling power. And then you've got the option to fish bloodworm on the hook. Deadly bait this time of year. And it just enhances your whole mix by having that bait in there. Super simple. Literally all you're doing is doing what you'd normally do, but have some joker in the mix. The next way to feed some joker is probably the most traditional way and that's in either a soil or a lean. Now if you don't know what soil or lean is, it's basically clay or soil. It's mud. It doesn't get any simpler than that. And the reason people use that to feed joker is because it's heavy and it'll take the bait to the bottom and break down on the bottom and release the joker, but it's not got any food in it like ground bait has. So fish can eat ground bait and it'll fill them up whereas they can't eat soil. They've just got to pick the joker or any other bait you put in there out of it. And that's why it can be very good to feed just soil or lean in the winter months. There's not a lot of food in other than the joker or other baits you put in there. So how do you actually go about mixing up some soil and lean to use for joker? It's really simple. I quite often just get a bag of lean or soil. Um, you can get a couple of different variations. Lean's a little bit lighter and clouds up a bit more and soil is heavier and makes less of a cloud. And as a general rule, lean for smaller fish, soil for bigger fish. And it's simply a case of emptying your soil or your lean into a bucket. A two kilo bag's more than enough for a session. And then adding a little bit of what's called gray lean. 
And this stuff's basically a binder. It's a very fine concrete sort of um, powder and adding about 300 mil of that, I just use my pole pot to measure it, um, into a bag of soil and then mixing it together. I particularly like to use a whisk, will just help it all stick and bind together before you put your joker in there. And you're left when you've done that with a mix that is a little bit like this. It should start to pebble up and go to little balls. And if it's not doing that, the thing to do is just get your atomizer, really handy, these, and just give it a little squirt of water and keep mixing it or whisking it up until it starts to make little tiny balls. And that'll enable you to squeeze the mix into a really firm, hard, heavy ball to carry that bait to the bottom but then it'll break down into its original form like so. So really good way of getting bait to the bottom without having lots of feed like ground bait in it. Now, what you actually put into that mix once it's done is entirely down to you. And that's where you've got to think about how good the day is going to be and what fish you're fishing for. And as a general rule for me, if you're fishing for roach, plenty of joker in there is really good. If you've got a bag of lean, that you've mixed up around 300 mil of joker and again just like with the the gray lean you can actually measure it out 300 mil of joker into that mix will make quite a joker rich mix like so and i've even put a few casters in mine today as well just because there's an odd big perch in here and as you can see there's lots and lots of joker an odd caster and for me that's the perfect feed on a tricky day to catch fish like roach and perch the final way of feeding joker is a little bit of an old fashioned one, but there's still a day and a time that it works really well. And that's feeding it raw, which is basically feeding it straight out of the paper as it comes. And in my experience, this works best on venues that aren't too deep, but are very, very silty and soft on the bottom where a ball of ground bait or a ball of soil might sink in there and fish are used to eating out of that silt on the bottom. When you feed joker raw, as it is like this, it'll land on the bottom, bits will wriggle and mix into the silt, and fish can grub in there, eating it as it would be in its natural form in a lake. So it's quite effective on shallow lakes, silty lakes, where you're fishing for quite wary fish. Um, two different ways of actually feeding raw. The first one is literally straight out of the paper. Open your paper up, you can get your globule of joker like that, stick it in your pole pot and pot it in. And often it'll take fish quite a while to come over that because there's lots of free offerings there for them to eat. So tend to have to feed raw joker like that and leave it for an hour or so to settle. And the other way of feeding raw joker is to add a little bit of the gray lean that I've already showed you. And it's simply a case of getting a bit of joker, whack it in a tub, and then really lightly sprinkle over the top a little bit of grey lean like so. And if you just give that a little shake up in your tub, it'll sort of separate out a little bit. And then while you're doing it, a little squirt with your atomizer, and all of a sudden it starts to knit together. And as you can see now, I can actually form a little ball of sticky together joker. So if you want to feed raw or your venue is quite silty, but it's a windy day, the lake's towing and you just want to add a little bit of weight to it, that'll just get that ball to the bottom and it'll break up and be in its natural form. So raw joker, really good for shallow venues, silty venues where you're fishing for wary fish that want to feed on the natural bottom. Soil and lean, great on natural venues, the perfect way to feed for roach and good on days when you don't want to feed too much ground bait or have other feed in there and then the simplest way and great for bigger fish like skimmers and bream little bit of your normal ground bait and just whack some joker in there and that is pretty much the three or four different ways of feeding this really effective bait Keeping joker at home is really, really simple. A lot of people talk about and worry about bubbling it, riddling it, keeping it in water, then draining it off and taking it out. And to be honest, I never do any of that. And again, that's a big advantage of having the Russian style joker. It's indestructible. 
And all I do is once I've been to the bank with it at a weekend, I'll get back on a Sunday night after fishing and open it up. And what you've got left will be a blob of raw joker like that. Just how you get it from your tackle shop or your supplier. And to keep that nice and lively for the next week, I find the best thing to do is what we call lean it up. And it's basically just riddling some lean on it. I'll show you how to do it now because this stuff will be perfect for me next weekend. Literally just get some plain black, doesn't matter what colour it is, damp lean and you don't need a lot. Just a big handful sort of thing. Riddle it over the joker, push them through, them few lumps through as well. And all that the lean does, that's about perfect amount to separate that amount of joker. And then just all that lean does, as you can see, it just separates it out. Rub your fingers through. Just be quite gentle with it. You don't want to kill it or crush it. But I find if you get your fingers and just give it a nice rub through, quite quickly, you can see it starts to separate out. It becomes really lively and looks really nice, actually, as well. And keeping Joker in lean like that just stops it getting any disease in it. Because when a little bit of Joker starts to die in a pack, it'll quickly run through the rest of it and kill it all. Whereas if you've separated it out, that doesn't seem to happen. And I've got a pack here that I'm going to show you in a minute that I've actually kept for two full weeks and it's still bouncing to get out the paper. So as you can see there, look, that's lovely. Separated out. Just spread it out a little bit in your paper so it's not all too deep and clumped together. Give yourself a nice spread. The thinner it is and the more room it's got, the better, and then just give it a nice little fold up. Tell you what you do get, you get damn good at origami when you've been doing a bit of joker fishing. I'm gonna learn to make a swan soon. And that is it, folks, literally. Separate her up, wang her in some paper, and all I do with that now is I'll put it on my cold garage floor, and every couple of days I'll give the paper a little squirt with an atomizer just to keep it damp, but, just to show you, this stuff here is what I've had from two weeks ago. Looks a little bit unlively there, but if I give it a little fluff up, look at that. And a lot of people think it's hard to keep. It doesn't stay alive unless you've got pumps and bubblers. That is two weeks old, that joker, and it is as lively as when I got it. Absolutely sound. Piece of cake. And the final thing I'll say is, I mentioned fishing with dead joker, which I like doing a lot for them bigger fish. And it's a very complicated process to produce dead joker because you have to actually get some leaned up joker like this and put it in the freezer without the missus seeing you. Top tip for you, if you're a bit fussy about putting it in your freezer, just put it in a plastic bag and tie a knot in it. It won't do any harm at all, but literally to make dead joker, stick this as it is in the freezer, 24 hours, or leave it for 12 months. When you get it out, it's ready to use. And that is as complicated as keeping Joker gets. Go on the skimmer. Look at him. Nice one, isn't he? Like a skimmer. And if you uh, guys and girls like what you've seen and you've learnt a few things, don't forget like and subscribe to the Tackle Guru TV YouTube because there's loads of videos with loads of different anglers doing loads of different kinds of fishing on there. On the rig front, my bloodworm gear is super simple and I only really have two patterns of float and two styles of bloodworm rigs that cover all the eventualities of that kind of fishing. One is ligging on, holding a bait still, fishing for bigger fish and the other is fishing quickly, trying to be as efficient as you can, catching large numbers of smaller fish. So to show you the bigger fish sort of holding a bait still rig to start with, You'll notice the float pattern itself is quite long and that's because I want it to be stable. And to add to stability, I've got a thick wire stem, really long. Again, it just sort of nails it there, especially in rough conditions. A round body, so it doesn't ride up when you're trying to hold it still, sat there on your spray bar. And I've got a medium thickness fiberglass bristle and that's important because I need to read indications on it and see it, especially in poor winter lie. Often people set bloodworm floats 
you need really thin tips and for me unless i can see it it's absolutely no use whatsoever so pick something you can see but it does need to be sensitive and that's why i've gone for fiberglass because it can be quite thick but it's still really sensitive so the float pattern for sort of skimmers bream bigger fish waiting for bites that's what i go for and the rig itself is shottered i've got a pattern that i always mention it because it wasn't me who come up with this it was will raisin and he showed it me five or six years ago now when we we're away on a world champs and i use it for all my skimmer fishing holding a bait still and it's a bulk around 40 centimeters from the hook length loop and i've got a taper of six droppers below it now i match them shot sizes to the size of float so on a 4x14s or a 4x16s, I'll have a bulk of number 9s and then six number 10s spread below it. On a 4x18s or a gram, I might change them droppers for number 9s and anything over a gram, I'll just use number 8s. And the whole idea of it is that you've got that line of lead underneath the bulk that'll pin that bait to the bottom. But when a fish does pick up your up bait, because you've got so much lead down the line, you'll see an indication it'll move the shot move your bulk and you'll see a lot of indications on it and i love that rig that will showed me for holding a bait still especially blood worm fishing for bigger fish and normally when i'm targeting skimmers bream and quality fish i tend to use an f1 pellet hook sounds crazy using a pellet hook for blood worm but generally i'm fishing baits like a pinky and two or three blood worm or a big bunch of blood worm on the hook so an F1 pellet's got that wide gape, but it's still very lightweight and thin wire. So you don't burst the blood worm and it's lightweight for skimmers and stuff to suck it up. Um, and normally just a plain old six inch up length of probably 08 to 012, depending on how good the fishing is. And I tend to use pure fluorocarbon for all the blood worm up lengths. Doesn't twist and spin up when you're shipping in and out fast. Um, the main line on my ligging rig is always 013 engage, nice and durable, tend to be using heavier, bigger floats. And the beauty of using a little bit thicker main line is when you've spent all that time making a rig up, you can wrap it back on a winder for another session without worrying about it. Now, the other float pattern that I use for bloodworm fishing, like I mentioned, is for busier fishing, lots of fish, catching numbers of roach and smaller fish, which you often do on canals and you can do it on commercials as well fishing closer in and the float pattern is suited to that it's got a carbon stem rather than a wire and the reason for that is because i'm in and out a lot i don't know about you lot but i'm quite clumsy and i often get wrap overs and tangles whereas a carbon stem float doesn't flick over as often when you ship it in and out it just reduces tangles makes you a bit more efficient and the body shape sort of an enlonged pair so that when I lower it in, the main body will settle and the float will set quickly because I'm going to be dropping my bulk in, lowering the float down and dropping it in and hoping for a bite within a few seconds. So you need a, that shape of float so that your float sets quickly. You don't want a fish to have eaten your bait and be pulling on your rig while your float's still settling. You can't be as efficient like that. So that shape of float's perfect for fishing quickly. And again, it's got that sort of medium, thin to medium fiberglass bristle on there. And the rig itself for this is different to the Skimmer Bream Big Fish rig because I want to get that bait down quickly into the killing zone, drop the rig in and hook a fish. So it's a simple bulk 30 centimetres from the hook length loop and then two number nine droppers. And the reason for them big droppers, even with a 0 0.4, 0 0.6 of a gram float, is that when a fish does pick up your hook bait and move a number nine shot, it'll register a bite really quickly. If you've got little faffy number 13, 12, 11 droppers, the fish will move them, but you won't see the bite as quick. So you don't catch as quickly. So nice and positive, a bulk, two big droppers, number nines. If I go above a gram, I'd change them for number eights. And then I have a six inch up length, but a little bit of a different hook on this one. Because you're fishing for smaller fish, you do need a smaller hook. And that's why I always go for an F1 maggot pattern for this. They've got quite a long straight point, And that shape hook works perfectly when you're fishing quickly for them small fish. And generally for roach and smaller fish, I do like to fish lights. Normally an 08 or an 010 millimeter hook length for that kind of fishing. So two rigs. Um, a final thing I will say 
I've, and I've touched on it, is on all my rigs, I do like to have the float dotted quite far down. And, and something I can't live without for bloodworm fishing is a few number 13 microcubes that I just use to dot that bristle down. You might have heard me talk about trimmer shots before, but if you haven't, I literally shot my floats in my shotting tube to the bristle, and then I'll add two, three, four, even five microcube 13s just to take it down to a pimple. So there you go. That is two bloodworm rigs that cover me for most of me fishing. If I'm brutally honest, all over Europe, I've used them same patterns. Both got a different use, but both really effective. Some fishing with Bloodworm and Joker is on natural venues where, of course, barbed hooks are allowed. And if that's the case, I've got two patterns that cover most of my fishing for that. For more finesse work, I like the super fine pole specials. They've got a longer shank, so when you're catching large numbers of small fish, you can hook them really easily. And it also makes hooking Bloodworm very, very easy. You can hold that shank of the hook and get it on super fast. A little bit like the F1 maggot hooks that I've talked about, but they've got that little micro barb on to just keep a few extra fish and your bait on the hook. And then if you are fishing a little bit heavier for bigger fish, skimmers, bream, that kind of thing with bunches of bloodworm, maybe you're fishing casters, maggots and pinkies over the top of it, then the normal pole specials are absolutely perfect. They've got a little bit thicker wire on them, they've got a bit more strength to them and they're generally a bit bigger. And for me, I tend to stick to 18s and 20s in the super fines and a 14 and a 16 in the pole specials. And them four patterns pretty much cover me for all my natural venue bloodworm fishing. Hopefully, folks, that's been of some use to you. And I've given you a guide of the ins and outs of bloodworm and joker, different ways of feeding it, a few tips and tricks for keeping it and a little bit of information about rigs and how to fish with it. So if you've not used it before, I really hope it encourages you to go out and give it a go because trust me, it's a fantastic bait in winter that virtually guarantees you some bites.